Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Viral Hepatitis, the Clinical Value of HEV Diagnosis for the Patient. I am Shelley Mulock of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Dio Sorin. To, to learn more, visit diosorin.com. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits after the webinar. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Dr. Francisco Rodriguez Frias, head of the Clinical Biochemistry Research Group of the Val de Hebron Research Institute, senior investigator at Cyber Hepatic and Digestive Diseases, and professor at Universidad Internacional de Catalunya. Dr. Rodriguez Frias, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thanks, first of all, thanks to Diasorin for giving me this opportunity to address such an exciting topic for me as is viral hepatitis. In this specific case, about the clinical value for the patient of the diagnosis of hepatitis E, which, as indicated in this title, is a highly relevant infection but still not very well known. There are many viral agents that can cause liver inflammation, but the main ones, and to, and to do so is very, in a very specific way, are the so-called hepatotropic viruses, A, B, C, D, and E, very simple. They infect the different routes, uh, parenteral, blood, or perinatal sexual, or enteral by fecal oral way, and have very different characteristics at the biological level, but give rise to very similar clinical situations in terms of symptoms and signs, but very different in terms of clinical course, prognosis, chronicity, treatment, and prevention. However, they have in common their appetite for the liver, in that in very high proportion, they give rise to asymptomatic initial infections. So neither the patient nor the doctors are aware of this infection. Of these five agents, the virus E is the focus of this presentation. Uh, about some preliminary data about this, uh, this uh, disease, hepatitis E virus was discovered in 1983 by Mikhail Valayan. Uh, clinically, an epidemiological hepatitis E virus is very similar to hepatitis A, predominantly enterically transmitted via fecal oral route and related to large epidemic. Uh, in fact, one of these large epidemics in Kashmir in India in 1978 allowed with the first description of this infection by Dr. Kuro. This doctor observed that uh, that emergency room and intensive care unit of the hospital were always occupied with a considerable proportion of pregnant women with liver disease with a very high mortality. After 18 months of these disease, this epidemics, more than 50,000 patients with enteric disease and near 2,000 deaths were produced. This epidemic was limited just for the villages that uses a channel of water named Ningli Nalag, see the picture, in which converge vast the water flows from public latrines, basti is deposited, utensils and clothes are washed, and the children drink and buy fish. In fact, after the initial description, it has been observed that hepatitis E, in addition to this enterical transmitted infection, is also transmitted by parenteral root as a zoonosis. In fact, it, this virus is the sixth in the ranking of animal-human spillover. Hepatitis virus infection usually causes acute self-limiting hepatitis and may cause chronic hepatitis among immunocompromised individuals and solid organ transplant recipients. Moreover, hepatitis virus infection poses a threat to pregnant women with a very high mortality, 10 to 50 percent of cases. Only a portion of those infected with hepatitis virus develop symptoms and the risk of symptomatic illness increased with the age of infection. The global burden, sorry, the global burden of this disease estimated that approximately yearly 20 million people were infected with this virus, leading more than 3 million symptomatic cases and, more than, and near 70,000 deaths and 3,000 still bear. 
uh, more than one billion people, one eight in all the world um, population, have been infected with hepatitis C in the past, and more than 100 million people have recent or current infection of this virus, with very high average prevalence all over the world. For instance, Africa, 22%, Asia, 60%, Europe, 9%, North America, 8%, South America, 7%, mm -hmm. Oceania, 6%, very high number. The global burden of this infection, as well as its related morbidity and mortality, is likely to be underreported, mainly to that a limited diffusion of the detection of this diagnosis, the lack of national hepatitis virus infection surveillance programs in many countries, and the lack of general knowledge about this infection by medical professionals, like indicated in the slides. According to the last update, hepatitis C virus is a quasi-enveloped virus. It's a very strange name because it's enveloped in blood but not enveloped in the stools. Uh, this is a single standard positive RNA virus. And here, according to the last update of the in virus, virus classification, hepatitis C virus belongs to the family Epipididae comprises a highly diverse viruses infecting multiple hosts, like mammals, birds, and salmonid fishes. Among the mammals, human hepatitis virus belong to orthoepivirus, a subfamily genus past lepivirus, and species balayani, in memory of the, the discovered balayan, which include eight genotypes with infecting, in addition to humans, pigs, wildboar, deer, rabbits, rometary, and bacterium camels. Some special attention may be uh, played to the genus Roca epivirus, which include Rodion epiviruses, like the species uh, Rax rati, which, which genotype C1 from rats, has been recently related to human transmission. It's also a zoonotic problem. Uh, currently, robust cell culture system for hepatitis C virus is still lacking, and suitable animal models for hepatitis, hepatitis C virus include non human primates, swings, rabbits, and human liver chimeric mice. Given the zoonotic potential for rabbits, for hepatitis C, uh, from rabbit, rabbit could be an important model for hepatitis C virus studies. Remarkable, but anti hepatitis C virus antibodies or serum surveillance worldwide has demonstrated a higher than expected hepatitis C virus prevalence rate that conflicts with the rarity of a sporadic nature of reported acute hepatitis cases. Perhaps because mostly cause a mild self limited disease, it will comment it during this presentation. In relation to the eight genotypes from the species Balayani, which infect the humans, among the major ones, genotype one to four, here, one to four, uh, genotype one and two are restricted to humans and the to endemic regions like Asia, Africa, and Mexico. Genotype three and four are also found in humans and in a wide range of special animal species. Therefore, they are zoonotic agents which can be transmitted from animal to human because they infect animal species, mainly pigs, which meat are consumed by humans, but also boars or deer. Genotype 3 is present worldwide in humans and various hosts such as wine, with boar, deer, mongoose, and Japanese macaques. And genotype 4 is found in humans, mainly in China, as well as the Sudest of Asia, and infect swines, with boar, and sheep. Pay attention to the fact Pay attention to the fact uh, that in the most developed areas where genotype 3 predominates, both humans and pigs have the genotype, clearly suggesting that in this region the transmission would be zoonotic by consumption of meat from these animals. However, in developing countries where genotype 1 and genotype 2 predominate in human, pigs, pigs still have genotype 3, suggesting that in this region, hepatitis virus transmission uh, in human to hu is human to human by waterborne route by contaminated water, by fecal residuals due to the poor sanitation conditions. In relation to the minor genotypes, five to eight, genotype five and six are, are isolated just from billboard in Japan, therefore it's not zoonotic cases reported. However, genotype seven and eight have been isolated from dromedary camels and bactrian camels, respectively, may also infect humans, as evidenced by some cases by consumption of milk or meat from these animals. And genotype Seven have reported to lead just one chronic infection in an immunosuppressed case. There are other hepatitis virus strains. The host range of hepatitis virus has been expanded recently in of prevalence of hepatitis virus 
antibody in different other special animals, including raccoons, cattle, dogs, cats, and sheep. Potential RNA can also be detected in small mammals, including rodents and bats. And recent cases of human infection by rat hepatitis e virus in most recent cases, but also in monocomitant cases, are, and has been associated to causes severe hepatitis in humans. There are an additional, another ep like viruses, very distantly related to hepatitis virus, even in some insect or, seed or, seed or, or, or another, even prawns. Predictably, the whole range of hepatitis virus will continue to expand over the years and provide us better understanding of the origin and evolution of this very important infection. There are some discrepancies, have been some, dis some uh, important discrepancies have been related for hepatitis virus presentation among the different uh, uh, developing or developed countries. Just summarizes in this table from very interesting review from uh, 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 um, co-workers, mainly related, this, uh, this discussion may be related to the route of transmission and the different distribution of uh, hepatitis virus genotypes. In the developing countries where genotype one and two are prevalent, it is infection is transmitted mainly as waterborne fecal oral to the poor hygienic conditions with a huge mortality of pregnant women, higher than 20% as in fact was observed by Kuro when he described this infection in 1978 in India. In the, in the case of developed countries, you know, type three and four are transmitted mainly by foodborne due to zoonotic transmission by consumption of undercooked meat and bowls for animals which share this genotype mainly pigs. Um, in fact, a broad host range of zoonotic uh, the hepatitis virus is known. Hepatitis virus is the only hepatitis virus with an animal reservoir. Also very remarkable that genotype 3 and 4 cause a persistent infection in immunocompromised patients. And it seems that the clinical manifestation has some um, dependency, some difference among different genotypes. At the biological level of this, this, this agent, we remind that this is a 7.2 kilobase strand genome. Uh, with encoded three uh, open reading frame, this region for encoding proteins, open reading frame one is encoded, encoded a protein, a polyprotein, which included, among other uh, activities, the viral polymerase for the virus is an RNA uh, dependent RNA polymerase with have a very high error rate, which justify the high complexity of the viral population in this, in the, in this virus. In fact, it's a quasi species. The open reading frame the open ring frame 2 encodes the capsid protein, the component of the, the, the capsid of the virus, and probably the main target for vaccines, and also is important as uh, in some role in serology. Open ring frame 3 encodes a regulatory protein, which seems implicated in the hepatitis e virus egress, and also interacting with capsides, but not in fecal virions, even in a, in a, in a half a possible role in immunomodulation. In relation to the viral cycle is indicated here, very complex. Basically, this genome is replicated by an RNA polymerase, which is translated from the genomic RNA directory. It will be encapsulated in new viral particles by capsid protein encoded by OR2, which is the, the capsid. And, uh, and also, the open reading frame 2 was uh, uh, encoded by the same subgenomic so uh, RNA, will be incorporated to the viral particles. But it seems that recent studies, very recent studies, Indicate is that this this uh, this uh, this protein or is is uh, is when uh, when incorporated when the, in the envelopes is wrapped by cellular membranes while virus secreted in the vial is not enveloped. Therefore, it's a dual uh, maturation of the virus enveloped in blood by the action of membrane frame two and non enveloped in vials. This is the reason why we know this virus of a quasi enveloped virus. The complexity of the viral population is not only a question of, of, of knowledge. I think that's related with some clinical situation. This is a very, very new development. In fact, it seems that in a acute phase, the complexity and diversity of the coding region of viral capsid domains were greater in immunocompromised patients who develop a chronic infection that the patient could not develop this infection and clear the, the infection. Therefore, some, some, it's important the question spatial complexity. Uh, we, we must keep in mind that the case of hepatitis E are not clinically distinguishable from other types of acute or chronic viral hepatitis. 
Diagnosis can be confirmed only by testing for the presence of antibodies against this virus, ECM or IgG, IgM or IgG, or the presence of the viral genome, or even the presence of the capsid antigen, known hepatitis virus antigen. Hepatitis virus serology diagnostic tests detect the highly concentration of the viral capsids. This table here summarizes the interpretation of the different serological and virological market infection. Pay attention that the antigen here, uh, no, the antigen is the last one. Uh, in fact, hepatitis EGM is the first line diagnostic assay in monocomportants. The EGG is in the market of past infection, as indicated in the seroprevalence estimation, and also important in order to analyze the possible response of uh, some vaccine, therefore, a tested vaccine efficacy. Hepatitis virus RNA is the first line diagnostic assay in the immunocompromised because they are not to, uh, very capacity to develop antibodies. Uh, it's important to establish the chronicity of permanent infection and also the possible response or not on antiviral, thera uh, antiviral therapy. And about the antigen, this capsite is useful recently for the diagnosis of an early active infection and if possible to be interesting in case of cost effective alternative to RNA. But pay attention that uh, this antigen, it seems that the explosion is not just part of the viral particle because it's also detected in free polymers in plasma samples. The methods of hepatitis viral infection have been uh, classically suboptimal. However, current methods have, have significantly improved their features, especially in sensitivity. However, despite this problem, this improvement, this improvement, sorry, the specificity have been difficult to determine. Many issues regarding the sensitivity and the specificity of these assays remain unresolved. In fact, they are less sensitive than hepatitis virus RNA detection. In addition to the traditional detection of ECG, IgG, or IgM specific antibodies, the possibility of application of the new immunosays based on the and, uh, uh, detection of hepatitis virus antigen have been proposed for the diagnosis of acute and also chronic infection. However, the awareness is about the, the problem I say is not always uh, located in viral particles. In fact, some awareness of the need for hepatitis virus testing has been increasing over the last decade, and many countries have begun to implement RNA screening in blood donations. This table, this table uh, coming from the guidelines of uh, Organization for the Study of the Labor, summarizes the protection of the different markets. In fact, so just summarizing. For the current acute infection, uh, the hepatitis virus RNA seems to be more important alone or in combination with IgM or even IgG or IgM uh, without RNA, but in presence of the rising levels of IgG or even hepatitis virus antigen alone. The current chronic infection is established by the presence of hepatitis virus RNA during more than three months after the acute phase with or without serology. And the past infection is established by the presence of IgG antibodies. In order to understand this, let's see this kinetic of which follow these markers. The RNA can be detected in blood and feces and stools three weeks after infection. Virus is excreted in the feces for approximately four to six weeks, sometimes more. Around the time of clinical onset, very variable, 15 to 60 days post infection, biochemical markers rise on antibodies began to appear. First, IgM, and followed shortly by IgG here. IgM and monocytes detecting IgM are, IgM are the most commonly employed methods for diagnosis of a recent hepatitis virus infection. They touch the monodemand parts of open ring frame 2 or open ring frame proteins. These antibodies have relatively short time, but can persist for more than one year. Like evidenced by this study of our own, own group, which significant proportion of IgM detected after two or even three years of acute infection, look, two or three years after the one. The case of uh, the, the interest of antibody, IgG antibodies, titers, the bank continues about increasing, rising more gradually during the convalescent period, and many uh, may be detectable for months or years. Lifelong, nobody knows, probably, but, but not still reported. The, in fact, the possible quantification of uh, hepatitis A virus IgG could have some value. That in recent have been provided some, some, uh, some reports, 
about the possibility to predict the convalescence and recovery using this increase in these levels. And also, uh, this increase can predict viral elimination and the establishment of the immune response against, against the virus. In fact, IgG levels inversely correlate with RNA viral load. Higher IgG levels, lower RNA viral load. About, about the antigen detection, it seems to correlate well. It seems that the acrylicoselated force of open reading frame, in fact, the hepatitis virus antigen are secreted in the sera of infected patients at high level. However, infection virions seems to be associated with a less abundant non acrylicoselated form. Therefore, two different forms of uh, antigen, but detected by the same, uh, the same test, the same test, uh, warning about that. The, these are the European Association of the Student of the Labor make this is recommendation about the RNA. In fact, they recommend the combination of serology and RNA detection. But this virus RNA can be detected very early in the acute course of infection and start in decline in serum till uh, seven or two weeks after post infection. It remains only during the acute phase in fourth infection, making it more specific to acute infection than, in fact, IgM detection, which also takes place during both the acute or than the convalescent periods. However, RNA will remain detectable in the hepatitis virus chronic cases in the presence in the presence of IgG antibodies. An anti-hepatitis virus IgM test is performed first in an hepatitis virus infection is suspected. But that is why testing is essential for diagnosing infections in immunosuppressant patients because the IgM antibodies may be absent due to immunosuppression. Also, following the recommendations of the, the ESL, the positive result for either RNA or IgM confirmed presence of active infection, while negative results for both rule out the pathway infection. If RNA persistent positive, they indicate the possibilities of chronic infections. This is recommend using this combination of serology, and this is uh, particularly use, useful for diagnosis uh, in the case of acute and chronic infection. The RNA is one of the most important in this question, but especially immunocompromised patients. They should recommend an algorithm with indicated in this slide. In my opinion, it's not too clear. For example, Immunocompetent patients like this one, immunocompetent patients here, uh, anti EGM and IgG and RNA are required to be positive for the site and acute infection. In fact, as indicated uh, in the figure four of this slide, of this figure, RNA negative does not exclude acute infection. The RNA is required to be positive joined to EGM and IgG. It's important to remark the utility of RNA in the case of immunosuppressed patients, in acute or even in chronic infection, also. For me, is more clarifying the interpretation of the table shown previously and now here again. Let's see an example of hepatitis C virus diagnosis in a clinical case corresponding to an acute hepatitis C in a patient undergoing immunotherapy. It was a 64-year-old woman who was operated for an ovarian cancer in September, at the end of September 2018, was treated with carboplatin uh, since the October, end of October 2018 to uh, December 89, uh, 20, 2019, sorry, and with immunotherapy uh, from July, from April to May of 2021. On February 7, 2022, laboratory observed transaminases elevation on acute here, and uh, transaminases elevation indicative of an acute hepatitis, alerting doctors. An acute hepatitis markers, including the, of the hepatitis virus serology, and RNA were added in samples corresponding to February 9. Uh, and this resulted positive, uh, confirming the hepatitis virus acute infection. In fact, this is our routine algorithm. The laboratory adds all these markers when in science, evidence liver injury, disregard the doctor request them. And current immunotherapy, current is under the immunotherapy, uh, having a spontaneous reduction of transaminases and viral load with a very general conditions. And it's a good, a good result. Determination of antipatitis virus antibodies is still enigmatic. There is not a gold standard, and results obtained with different assays often diverge. In fact, this, 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 this study from 2016, uh, 2016 uh, finds just a 70% of concordant results of, uh, among different, uh, different methods for EGM and IgG. However, the current assays have been improved. This big table from this study 
from Lome in 2019 shows the sensitivity and specificity of multiple serological tests for hepatitis virus, evidencing a large variability among them. This is a non-made table summarizing all this data from the most widespread methods. Globally, the most processive and practical ones are the automatic methods, which show very optimal features near 100% sensitivity and specificity of this we are in the current way currently. As indicated in the state of this, uh, this slide, uh, here the recent chemiluminescent assay developed by Diocin for the platform liaison automatic analyzer, which provides a new kit in the block, really. They provide the sensitivity and specificity reported data, and also the reported in this independent study from Abarbanel coincided in a very optimal feature for these technologies. In fact, uh, the clinical sensitivity of IgM assays was in this study was 100% for acute fast epidemic cases and just 58% in post pandemic cases, which is normal, in the case of immunocompetent patients, and around 24% in acute fascia or pandemic, and 71 in post pandemic for immunocompromise. The, this, this very good uh, result, the very good features, and also shared with the EJJ size with around 100% for, for pandemic samples, and 95% in the case of immunocompetent after input pandemic phase, and near 90% in the immunocompromised cases. A very high specificity and very high sensitivity. The limit of detection the IgGSA is very low, 0.3 uh, international units according to the World Health Organization standard, they are, they, in fact, among the lowest in the market. It seems clear that the CLEA, the chemical assays are a promising new technology uh, are obviously completely automatic. There are new hosts in serology. I think is, this is a reality. In addition, the analysis of RNA may be warranted as a complement in the laboratory diagnosis of ongoing infection. Because despite the improvement of hepatitis virus serological methods, they have, uh, they still have some concerns. Since scientific societies currently recommended the combination of NAT testing the RNA testing as suggested by ESL guidelines. Perhaps in the next version of these guidelines, we'll change this recommendation once the new feature of serology will uh, to be, be widely validated. However, currently, according to ESL guidelines, NAT test is recommended. In this sense, there are very good methods for theater testing, extremely very sensitive, like indicated in this slide, and also in automatic platform like this book one. Uh, for, for example, and, be, and completely automatic uh, methods. Uh, it, it has been incorporated in the Howard Blue Band in Catalonia and also in Howard Hospital. These methods here, the cover from Roche, with half this incredible sensitivities, around less than 10 international units by milliliter. No serologic tests to diagnose hepatitis virus infection have been still approved by FDA. This is this is not a strange situation, but this is the reality now. There are no consensus across laboratories for hepatitis virus testing, and the sensitivity and specificity for hepatitis virus assay vary quietly. Perhaps accounting for the difference in reported rates of anti hepatitis virus antibody in various populations for, serology, for seroprevalence. Such seems indicated this meta analysis of heart and co workers. Pay attention to the huge difference, huge difference in the prevalence of all countries in relation to the laboratory method of the same country very different proportion using one or another uh, methodologies. And they are summarizing this, is this blue bar graph here, high sensitivity for one type and lower for the other one. The same is evidenced in this report from Sauleda et al. from our own Blue Bank in Catalonia, analyzing near 10,000 donors by two methods, and the prevalence result is very different, 20% using Bantairus testing and 11% using microgen assay which is the current, nobody knows. An interesting observation of this report is that the prevalence was clearly increasing with the age from the donors, higher in older people. Uh, indicating, clearly indicating that the, the, the improvement in the hygienic condition through the time. Because uh, a large percentage of infection do not present with symptoms, the disease often goes undiagnosed. The individuals presenting virus with hepatitis, both acute and chronic, Symptoms are indistinguishable from those of hepatitis A. We must keep in mind always. 
achieve a potassium infectious disease the less known and the worst known of all viral pathogens. Even at academic level, it is not usually studied in there. Perhaps by this reason, many doctors do not include it in their differential diagnosis of viral hepatitis. So that frequently, when performing hepatitis test A, B, C, uh, and are negative, these cases are considered as a toxic hepatitis or drug-induced liver injuries, or even autoimmune. Even often in developed countries, it is still considered an infection coming from under underdeveloped countries. When hepatitis C is the most common cause of acute viral hepatitis worldwide, as even uh, indicated, even this is a study in our own uh, hospital. Look, the hepatitis virus wins normally in the proportion of acute hepatitis. In fact, in several centers have retrospectively analyzed for the patient of hepatitis C virus of a stored sera from patients with undetermined acute liver failure. And patients who previously have been labeled as having drug induced liver injury are increasingly recognized as really due to acute, to acute hepatitis E virus. There's some study in relation to that all over the world of cases with suspected drug induced liver injury or toxic hepatitis, which, in fact, after retrospective, retrospective studies, have a significant proportion of them, 9 to 16 percent, were in fact hepatitis E. And let's not forget the importance of ruling out hepatitis E cases of suspected autoimmune uh, causes, as is indicated by ESL. In fact, ESL makes these recommendations. All hepatitis, all patients with hepatitis should be tested for hepatitis E virus as part of the first line virological investigation, irrespectively of travel history. Not just the patients who travel from undeveloped, underdeveloped countries carry the hepatitis E. Patients presenting with suspected DILI, drug induced liver injury, should be tested for hepatitis A, hepatitis C, sorry. Always following with uh, uh, the European is guidelines, all the patients with chemical evidence of hepatitis should be tested for hepatitis C virus as part of the first line neurological investigation. All patients with symptoms consistent with acute hepatitis should be tested for hepatitis C. Patients with unexplained flares of chronic liver disease and all immunosuppressed patients with unexplained and normal liver function tests. Due to the extrahepatic manifestation of this, of this infection, which we commented um, in the next slide, patients with other relevant clinical manifestations should be screened for hepatitis virus in this regard of uh, uh, transamination elevation. Do it that, that uh, hepatitis virus can be also transmitted by blood, and the huge prevalence of viremia among blood donors, I will comment also in the next slide, all over the world, patients with a normal liver function test after receiving blood products should be tested for hepatitis virus too. DFAR is recommending to the screen of fruit donors of hepatitis virus by nucleic acid testing in case of window period. The European CDC surveillance report indicated here for hepatitis C revealed a 10 times fall increase in hepatitis C virus cases in Europe between 2005 and 2015, showing clearly that hepatitis C virus is also a public health problem in Europe, and therefore the need to implement hepatitis C virus surveillance. About the clinical course of this infection, irrespective of the viral genotype, but the virus infection is usually mild or asymptomatic without sequelae. Less than 5% of exposed individuals develop hepatitis. Like hepatitis A, by its infection, the risk of symptomatic illness increases with the age of infection. Hepatitis virus infection leads to a self limiting illness lasting for weeks with a broad range of clinical manifestations from a symptomatic course to acute liver failure of fulminant with fatality rates uh, among 1.2 to 4%. Hepatitis virus is associated to 3.3% of all deaths from viral hepatitis worldwide. This is very important. After around two to six weeks incubation, liver and some elevation occurs and may be accompanied by symptoms such as abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, anorexia, fever and hunger. That means identically to any other uh, acute hepatitis. In countries with sanitation, with poor sanitation, with genotype 1 in infection during pregnancy, often results in fulminant hepatitis failure associated with severe placental disease, including eclampsia, hemorrhage, membrane root, um, break, spontaneous abortion, and stillbirth, with a 30% of mortality rate, very high levels. 
In addition, in some patients, chronic infection may ensue, often with rapid fibrosis progression leading to cirrhosis. The most, this most commonly occurs in immunocompromised individuals, such as solid, solid organ recipients and patients receiving chemotherapy, around 60% of cases. Additionally, hepatitis C may be associated with neurological manifestations, such as Guillain-Barré, neurologic amyotrophy, and meningitis. In fact, these two points will be developed better in the next slides. Okay. Hepatitis C virus leading cause is the leading cause of bacteric hepatitis and acute liver failure all over the world. This is very important. In developing, in developing world, big epidemics are the typical presentation with sporadic and sporadic outbreaks like India, Sudan, Mexico, in fact, with thousands affected. In fact, the, the first discussion was due to this one epidemic in, in India. But this is just in developing countries. Historically, it seems not. Outbreaks probably for hepatitis C virus have been recorded in Europe with big mortality in pregnant women in 18th and 19th centuries, perhaps not currently by the improvement of sanitation conditions in Europe, which still are very suboptimal in developing countries. However, during the last decade, increasing recognition of autochthonous locally occurring infection has been observed in developed countries. Hepatitis virus infection usually causes acute, self-limiting asymptomatic hepatitis, more so in the case of zoonotic genotypes 3 and 4, infection than, than in, in not zoonotic uh, genotype 1. However, acute hepatitis is a concern in patients with underlying chronic liver disease. Some cases of acute and chronic liver failure are caused by this infection, hepatitis e virus, hepatitis virus infection, especially in elderly patients where acute hepatitis may take a more severe course. Moreover, it may cause chronic hepatitis among immunocompromised individuals and solid organ transplant recipients. Individuals with underlying liver disease, this acute hepatitis infection can cause an acute and chronic hepatitis leading to discompensated cirrhosis with a very high level a rate of mortality, near 70%, often unrecognized or mass diagnosis of drug-induced liver injury. But this virus infection should be searched in patients with unexplained observation of chronic hepatitis suspected of DD. Now, one of the most sorry, yeah. now the one of the most worrisome characteristic of hepatitis C virus infection, and that was triggered to describe this disease. Hepatitis infection poses a threat to pregnant women with a very high mortality, 10 to 50%. The most severe cause of disease is in pregnant women with genotype 1. Infection during pregnancy often results in fulminant hepatitis failure. This is associated with several, several placental disease, including eclampsia, etc., etc. And recently, this study from Gulli and, and, and co-workers in Nature Communication find some relationship between, between the genotypes indicating clearly that genotype 1 is worse than genotype 2. Now, hepatitis C virus may cause chronic hepatitis, especially among immunocompromised individuals and solid organ transplant recipients, like initially described by Kamar and, and multiple additional reports. This is the original uh, from Kamar, and this has additional reports indicating the same one. Uh, chronic hepatitis virus infection defined as the persistence Define it as the persistence of cell RNA of this virus and elevated liver enzyme more than six months after the acute phase. It's not recognized in these immunocompromised patients, such as organ transplant recipients, as indicated by Kamar, or also patients with HIV infection or hematological malignancies undergoing chemotherapy. Today, only patients with infected pathogen for genotype 3 and 4 have been reported to suffer this chronic infection. And this chronic infection may rapidly evolve to cirrhosis and the loss of a liver graft. All this data, this data suggests that in a solid organ transplanted recipients, patients who are viremic for more than three months after this infection can be regarded as chronically infected and considered for treatment. The majority of chronic hepatitis infections are asymptomatic. Yes, uh, uh, yes, one third develop some symptoms with mild to moderate elevation in serum ALT. While immuno, uh, however, while immunocompetent individuals clear promptly this hepatitis C virus, usually in a few weeks, with a mild course of often asymptomatic infection, in the case of immunocompromised, this infection is often more difficult to clear, and about 60% of these patients go on to develop chronic infection 
what that may lead to liver cirrhosis and organ failure. Autochthonous local Achilles infection is not a benign condition, uh, showing some high mortality rate are near 30 percent in patients with underlying chronic liver disease with a previous liver disease. Is this infection is an addition to hepatic uh, manifestation is also related to other frequent extrahepatic manifestation, which affect multiple organs indicated in this in this in this image here, and also indicated this table from the for the guidelines of the ESO. Interestingly, shows. Tissue treatment, not just for liver tissue, also for other tissues, other organs associated with this extrahepatic manifestation. In fact, this virus infects and replicates primarily in the liver. However, studies performed in animal models reported this replication also in the small intestine, colon, lymph nodes, uh, kidneys, spleen, stomach, placental tissue, etc. About the neurological manifestation are the most well known and frequent among this extrahepatic manifestation. More than 90% of the cases of this case are observed in immunocompetent individuals, but also occur in chronic infection of genotype 3 in when immunocompromised patients. The best documented uh, situation are Guillain Barre syndrome, neurologic amyotrophy, encephalitis, and myelitis. In, in fact, around 5 to 11% of patients with Guillain Barre or uh, neurologic amyotrophy show contact with hepatitis C virus. The, the RNA is detected in cerebrospinal fluid of patients with neurological symptoms during the infection and with a resolution of, and this, the neurological symptoms are resolved after viral clearance, indicating clearly that these symptoms were associated with hepatitis E virus infection. In fact, hepatitis e virus can grow in a range of neurological cell illness and in vivo studies show that uh, can cross the blood barrier. The prevalence of the infection is worldwide, especially the ratio market in red, mainly in developing countries However, with important values in more developed countries such as Europe, indicating in this in this map. Yeah, important, very important prevalence of antibodies against these virus in different countries, even developed ones such like Spain, France, Germany, or China, but including the very high level in Poland, for instance, 42% is very high, evidencing the high probability of contact with this virus through the world. Keep in mind that this prevalence could be related with the different different uh, tests used for the for, for the establishment. But probably the most astonishing observation is the high prevalence of viremia, that means the RNA, among blood donors all over the world. Look, the numbers one in, in just some thousand of, of donations. Taking into account, for instance, this one. In, in, in very in pace, pace, uh, countries like Netherlands, other France, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Taking into account that this infection can be uh, transmitted through the blood and the high prevalence of deep viremia in blood donors in various countries of Asia and Africa, as well in Europe, like here in Central Italy, Netherlands, Sweden, Southern France, West Germany, Catalonia, and Spain, the need for routine screening of this infection in blood donation seems evident and mandatory. In the case of Spain, the prevalence is slightly different in several studies, but in all of them, very significant with an increase in the same with age and seen in this study, national pressure prevalence, like previously found by Sauleda et al. This is an update of the prevalence of RNA performed recently the last year in How Blue Bank, analyzing more, near 7,000 blood donor donations and they find again a very high prevalence of RNA, one in 4,000. In addition, they confirmed the zoonosis as a main route of infection, football infection in, in our country, because most infected donors reported consumption of pates and sausage. Also, around 60% were negative for EGM and EGG, the indicated they are in the period, but they were infectious. All hepatitis virus related belong to genotype 3. All infected donors spontaneously resolved infection and non neurologic symptoms were or infection were observed. And one of the most important is that is, since the implementation of RNA universal testing in our country, here in Catalonia, no cases, no new cases of transfusion transmitted infection were reported. This data clearly indicated that hepatitis C virus screening of blood donation provides a safer blood for all recipients, especially for immunosuppressed persons. Therefore, this virus presents multiple infection ways, enteral or parenteral. Enteral way means waterborne 
for genotypes one and two of food board for zoonotic in genotype three, and parenteral by blood board observed in genotype three. Uh, the enteral waste by consumption of contaminated water is the major route of transmission of the infection in developing countries, genotype one and two, but this is not the case in internationalized countries where any sanitation conditions are supposed to be better. In Indonesia, industrialized countries, in developed countries, but that virus is, is widespread by animal to person. That means zoonosis. Some animal species may act as reservoir for the infection, preferentially swine, but also wild boar or deer. The main route of transmission are contact with infected animals and the consumption of contaminated food, usually pork products. Therefore, high control measures to detect contaminated food and to avoid professional exposure should be implemented. In the case of parenteral way, as indicated, is blood borne way. Blood components can also be a source of virus and should be screened, uh, keeping in mind the huge prevalence observed in donors all over the world. Also, frequently, self limited infections sometimes evolve to chronic infection, immunocom immunosuppressed individuals, and this may lead to cirrhosis. Hepatitis virus can also be transmitted by transplanted organs. This is very important. This is a graphical summary of the different ways of transmission. Uh, Waterborne, typical for genotype 1 and 2 in developing countries, and also be, by transmission by drinking water contaminated by human feces infected with genotype 1 and 2, or also genotype 3 and 4. This could be in developing countries, though probably due to the best sanitation conditions. And also by, enter, by enteral way, serotic transmission mainly in developed countries for genotype 3 and 4, by direct or indirect contact with infected animals, consumption of contaminated products, Important role on this problem is the consumption of raw or undercooked meats from swine, bulls, sheep, and deer. A route that is not too taken into account is that hepatitis virus can be transmitted by consumption of shellfish, which accumulate and concentrate water microorganisms and also vegetables with, uh, irrigated with contaminated waters. Pay attention to the high proportion of this RNA of the virus. In, in, in this selfies, in this selfies, and also in water samples. Finally, remark the important role of blood transfusion as parenteral way for hepatitis virus transmission, illustrated by this relevant report of Hayward in Atlantic in, in 2014. Uh, around 40% of blood companies are given to immunosuppressed, with a global hepatitis virus transmission of 42%, and up 60% of these cases develop a chronic infection. And also remain the parenteral transmission, which is usually asymptomatic. However, increased risk of developing chronic hepatitis virus in previous chronic liver disease, even progress to acute on chronic liver disease. And also possible the vertical transmission, near 40%, reported recently by Vigna, or in the case of solid organ transplantation. We want to see some, some, some clinical cases like this is very, very, very curious. This article included a study of high number of jaundice cases reported from two military training centers in north of India. All cases were tested for hepatitis, bad care, or developed a typical sign of, of, of acute infection. Environmental investigation of food and water so that was conducted to identify the sort of infection. And only one case have some complication for fulminant hepatitis, but no were no death because they are young people. And the consumption of Jewish orange juice with eyes from Jewish shops was significantly associated with illness. The 90% of cases were EGM positive. Jewish shops and training centers were using ice made from contaminated water. The ice was responsible with positive coliform tests. <clears throat> All other water samples tested satisfactorily. Epidemiological evidence concluded that a large viral hepatitis E outbreak was likely caused by consumption of juice with contaminated ice. Early stoppage of contaminated ice usage led to timely control of this outbreak. And this is another case in fed in our own uh, hospital. This patient was treated with intravesical BCG for bladder cancer, presenting a disseminated BCG infection, including a fungal aneurysm. This aneurysm required surgery, and this surgery required uh, transfusions. He started also the treatment with antituberculosis for the BCG infection, <coughs> as well as antibiotic for a pseudomonas infection. Two months later, he developed symptoms and signs of acute hepatitis, which was assumed to be due to the toxicity of the, the treatment, uh, daily, and the treatment was stopped by the result. The liver inside, however, in, in, despite this, this stopping, this, this treatment, the liver inside continued rising 
um, and very pronounced jaundice, discarding this as a possible cause of toxicity. Therefore, no was a DG. The serology for viral disease was negative, as well as other possible causes of acute viral liver disease, but it was positive for EGM for hepatitis C, as well for RNA for this virus. So it was finally diagnosed with acute hepatitis due to the parenteral hepatitis C virus transmission through blood transfusion. Fortunately, this, um, this recovered, we recovered the cushion was good, allowing him to restart anti-tuberculosis treatment. And also the possible donor was analyzed. And the study of the donor here, the study of the donor indicated that he was infected by zoonotic pathway. He worked in a pork uh, sausage factory and often tested raw pork meat and was asymptomatic. Instead, the receptor was, who received the red blood cell transfusion was thin somatic, developing of acute hepatitis. The phylogenetic study confirmed that they was an, uh, infected by the same virus. Therefore, this clinical case includes two different ways of hepatitis virus transmission. Zoonotic for the donor and blood transfusion for the recipient. In addition, the hepatitis virus serological study was taken into account to avoid a direct diagnosis of DILI. Initially, it was diagnosis of DILI, but this, this reason, but this reason they uh, uh, stopped the anti antibiotic treatment. Furthermore, it highlights the importance of hepatitis virus as a cause of acute hepatitis also in an immunocompetent patient with a history of recent blood transfusion. And once again, raises the question of whether blood donor should be tested for RNA to prevent this kind of transmission. What about therapy? What about therapy? The therapy, in relation to the possible therapy approaches, the my strategy is a, a, a specific uh, antiviral rebabbling, or even pegylate interferon, but pegylate interferon have some uh, bad, bad uh, effects. In some chronic infections, successfully viral clearance have been obtained after rebabbling or and or pegylate interferon treatment. In fact, rebabbling has become the first line medical treatment for both acute, if required, and chronic infection recommended by the ESL, but it, the ESL not included in this recommendation the doses of this, this pharma, this treatment. In the case of patients under immunosuppressive treatment who are the most, uh, most of for possible cases of hepatitis C, uh, chronic hepatitis C cases, like transplanted cases, with the more risk for hepatitis infection, ESL recommend start reducing immunosuppression by which one third of cases achieve hepatitis virus clearance. In the two thirds, in the two remaining third, they, um, they recommend the use of organic with a, a intermediate high uh, systolic biological response around, around 65 to 70 percent. Some alternative treatment, but well, there are currently in the study the possibility to use this antiviral, the sofosbuvir with this antiviral used for hepatitis, uh, for hepatitis C some testing cell culture and just not too much studies in, in humans we are currently in progress but what about prevention if the prevention is different about the genotype one uh, and two or genotype three and four in the case of relative genotype one and two the basic sanitation and simple health intervention is good but is not adequate for prevent additional infection therefore a vaccine against hepatitis virus is highly desirable especially for residents living in highly endemic areas and for those in high risk of developing complications. However, there are not a consolidated vaccine. The most promising vaccine still exists is the this China vaccine with that in, in, in other uh, patients are quite affording a very, uh, very high efficacy, but uh, additional studies are currently in, in progress. In relation to genotype three and four in Western world, because the transmission is predominantly via undercooked food stuff, there must be education on adequate cooking to minimize risk of transmission via food chain. With regard to the prevention of transmission via contaminated blood products, it's obvious that the best solution is to general screening in blood banks. Therefore, some messages time to take to home messages. First one, hepatitis virus infection is strongly underdiagnosed due to this high proportion of asymptomatic cases, evidenced by its high prevalence, but above all, due to the lack of awareness about this disease by health professionals, who frequently do not include it in the differential diagnostic process of acute liver disease that even result in diagnosis error. We include it in the lab in these cases. The clearly suboptimal serological diagnosis compared to other hepatitis have been improved significantly in recent years especially due to the incorporation of the matter chemiluminescence size. 
However, the diagnosis of acute infection still requires the combination with the study of RNA and is recommended by uh, scientific societies. Hepatitis C virus can infect by multiple ways, enteral and parenteral, enteral by water contaminated with fecal residuals, zoonosis by consumption of undercooked food products from animals like pigs that share viral genotypes with human and even vegetables and selfish contaminated with, local, with fecal water. And parenteral by blood root with a high proportion of donation with viremia recommending, with, uh, with recommend, strongly recommend the screening on blood, in blood bags. Although only a small proportion of infections are symptomatic, it can lead to very severe form of liver, of liver disease with a very high mortality in the case of pregnant women infected with genotype 1, as well as in patients with previous liver disease. In addition, to being associated with acute hepatitis, but also is associated with chronic liver disease, especially in immunosuppressed individuals, rapidly progressing to cirrhosis, the faster. A specific antiviral treatment or vaccine are still not available. But all these data provide show the importance of raising awareness about the hepatitis virus, uh, promoting adequate screening of all people at risk acquiring hepatitis virus infection and developing serious clinical manifestations. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez Prias, for your inform informative presentation. We'll now Thank start you. the live. Yeah, absolutely. We will now start the live Q and A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask okay. a Question box located on the far yeah. left of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So yeah. let's get started. Uh, our first question is: Which patients are tested for hepatitis E virus in your lab? Okay. Uh... In her lab, we reported the first case of hepatitis C in 1993. That's been a lot of years ago. That means uh, 30 years ago. And since then, we have included we have included uh, this study in our diagnostic case procedures. Obviously, serological and biological methods have evolved a lot since then. But our criteria have always been the same, which in fact coincides with the recommendation reported by the ESA recently. In fact, we have been following these recommendations before nobody is included in, in this in, in some recommendation. In other words, we have followed the recommendations since a lot of years ago. Basically, all patients with symptoms consistent with acute hepatitis should be tested for hepatitis C. And avoid deducing that because he's seronegative patient for other viral hepatitis to be a toxic hepatitis or drug-induced liver disease, as I have indicated in one of the, my clinical cases. We also systematically test for hepatitis C in patients with unexplained first on chronic liver disease. We have a lot of chronic liver, uh, liver patients previously for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, due to its susceptibility and high prevalence. And um, we reported, as we reported in patients with advanced liver injury, as in the as well as the tremendous morbidity of this infection in these cases. Remember, it's around 70% in the cases as acute on, on chronic infection. From a very early, around 20 years ago, and using techniques developed by us, in-house techniques, we included the study of RNA in these diagnostic procedures, being aware of this limitation of the serological techniques that were available at that time, as I have indicated. Perhaps not is not the case now, but we still remain following this recommendation. In fact, this, this RNA is recommended for clinical guidelines for an adequate diagnosis of hepatitis infection, acute hepatitis. We hope that improvement in serology allow to limit, to limit the use of the facility because it's, it's, it's easier to, to use serology than RNA testing. But still today is not possible. And as indicated in guidelines and it's in common sense, we apply hepatitis virus RNA to all immunosuppressive cases with alternate tests for possible liver disease. As in the clinical case that I have mentioned, in which the laboratory is usually the one, the first, <laughs> who gives the notice to the doctor about the situation. We observe the possible hepatitis, and we decide what the next step is. See, the doctor has included some, some testing, and also say to the doctor, warning, this patient could be affected by an acute hepatitis. And we give the solution because we make the analysis, the serological study, and not the NAT analysis. Uh, since the cases of chronic hepatitis in transplanted patients were reported in 2008, since then, 
We included in all diagnostic procedures systematically uh, the testing for hepatitis C in all patients who are in waiting list to trans for transplant, and we follow them up after the transplantation. And finally, we test RNA in serum the chronic cases and also the treated cases, even fecal RNA have been included recently because the, 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 the stall RNA is have more time to be eliminated than serum RNA. And in addition, we continuously disseminate that is essential to carry out this diagnostic in case procedure for hepatitis A. You remind that the lack of awareness in one of the cases on the diagnosis of this infection. Mm -hmm. Because for her experience is the main problem. And we make continuously this teaching, teaching and teaching, like this webinar you have. Thanks for, for, for giving these opportunities to say this one. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. That's very helpful. Um, our next question is, what is the role of quantitative IgG antibody detection? We currently do not assess the levels. However, we have the levels and we resist these levels, but we have no into account for diagnosis utility. However, I think it will be very useful in the future. Currently, because there are intuitively, I think it's very logical. High level of antibody have some meaning. And there have been some recent reports indicating this possible utility. Like, for instance, the, the, yeah, very early in the review of Kamar and recent team by Sultan and co workers in 2021 that have commented, a couple of commented in my presentation, they indicate a possible added value of this ECG quantification in the sense that the peaks of ECG can predict convalescence and recovery. That means, as well as that, in its increase can predict the bar elimination and establishment of immune responses. This is logical because they are antibodies. But this is not recommended, but we cannot use for viruses. But we have a lot of interesting hopes about this possibility. Oh, good. OK. Wonderful. Well, uh, we have one more question. We have time for one more question. Um, our last question is, how can labs improve the identification of patients with hepatitis E virus infection? Yeah, the laboratory have a very important role for improving the identification of patients with hepatitis E. In fact, has been that sometimes we are the first indicating this possibility when we take the decision that not, not being requested by the, by the doctor, we, use, we follow the algorithm in order to to say, okay, it's an hepatitis C because we have serological and not, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Therefore, the laboratory must incorporate the serological and biological diagnostic procedure for this infection. Exactly the same as for any other viral hepatitis. I must assume, we, they are must assume and follow the clear recommendation of international clinical guidelines. They recommend because it's an important infection. To facilitate all this, there are good, very good automatic serological methods are available today in order to avoid the dead use and, and not very, uh, very, very reproducible manual techniques of enzyme immunocytes. It is as simple as treat this infection as any other hepatopathy. And forget the stigma of its possible exotic or external origin, only associated with travelers from developing countries. But that is, is currently the best cause, the best etiology for acute hepatitis all over the world, also in developed countries, like whole countries, Europe, America, etc. Cetera, et cetera. This is very important. I think I have started very clear during my presentation. And let us not forget the enormous prevalence of bilemia in blood banks, indicating that this virus is running, circulating with facilities in all the world. Therefore, we must incorporate these technologies. And this is that as sometimes this is a responsibility for laboratories because we are, we know the credibility of the serology, we know this one. Our commitment is to widespread this idea. And we have very, 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 I think it's very important, very important role in this question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Dr. Rodriguez Frias, for your time today and your important research. Um, do you have any final comments for our audience today? Yes, my continuous say, be aware of that disease, but that disease exists with E. Hmm. It's not extreme, it's not emerging. Is not external. It's mm -hmm. also for Europe. The hepatitis is is one of the most important. Probably there are not two symptomatic cases, but when they are symptomatic, terrible. 
like pregnant women or like in the case of previous infections with other uh, in other chronopathies and evolving very fast as faster as early detection of this better the solution and have hopes belief in the development of technologies because really have increased and improved a lot during the last five years simply incorporate think in hepatitis c and simply this is our obligation and our commitment no more and thank you for the Asurian for giving the opportunity to say these questions in this important forum. Absolutely, and thank you so much. And we'd also like to thank our Lab Roots and our sponsor, Dia Soren, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Uh, before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. The webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.